Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this MoTeC webinar. My name is Dwayne Mitchell, and I work in the MoTeC R&D Centre in Melbourne, Australia. Today's subject is how to connect other devices to the new M84 ECU. Now, this is going to be a fairly uh, solid content webinar, so we're going to have to move fairly quickly. And what we're going to cover is what exactly is an M84, how M84s are connected to other devices, and then we're going to go, we'll go through all of the MoTeC devices that will interact with an M84 and the ones that won't interact. And then after that, we'll go through the individual devices and we'll show you the setup screens for the software so that you can replicate these settings to ensure that your M84 connections work properly. So an M84 is an entry level ECU, which is based on our 100 series family, which includes the M400, the M600 and the M800. Physically, it has the same appearance. It has different firmware in it and it is uh, functionally very similar, but we've simplified the setup and we've designated some inputs and outputs as fixed. This means that the M84 has less flexibility than an M800, for example, but it's actually very easy to set up in comparison because we have pre-designated which inputs and outputs are to be used, and therefore uh, we find that the ECU can actually be set up with a little bit less uh, confusion. So each of the inputs is designated, for example, for throttle position, manifold sensor, and so forth, and each of the outputs in the same way. Uh, we have actually, Peter Swinney has done a very detailed uh, webinar on this topic, so we won't cover this in detail. One of the uh, big pluses for the M84 ECU is that we include wideband Lambda and 500k logging included in the price. So there is no need to purchase an upgrade code for those two functions. You get that uh, with the ECU and it's, it, there's no time limit on those things. There are some capabilities which uh, you need to purchase upgrade codes for, and the reason MoTeC does this is so that we can offer the product uh, at a base level at the best possible price, and therefore you're not paying for anything that isn't actually of any use to you. So for example, high-low injection, traction control, uh, an extra lambda channel, uh, overrun boost and gear change cut are possible with an M84, but they're not included in the base price. Now, there are some functions that you might find in an M800 series ECU that are never available in an M84. Again, this is uh, as a result of us trying to produce a entry-level ECU with capabilities that may not be necessary uh, for a lot of the vehicles that this ECU is designed for. So you can't get drive-by-wire. Uh, there's no way to modify the CAN communication settings. There is no option for knock control or camshaft timing control. Uh, if you need to do any of these things, you'd need to purchase an M400, an M600, or an M800 ECU. Uh, the original firmware that we've released for the M84 uh, is we call version 100G. Uh, this is going to be upgraded very soon because we're, we're making some slight changes to our firmware. So for the purposes of this webinar, you should have version 1.00G or higher in your ECU for this functionality to be possible. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at an M84 and how it will connect with other devices. For some reason, I can't see that on my own screen. So what we have here is a typical application. The ECU is an M84, and we're looking at uh, other things that, that we'll be discussing today that may be typically connected to an M84. So the diagram you're looking at is by no means the limit of what is, is possible. It's just an example of things that we might typically use an M84 with. So you can see on the uh, left-hand side we have a GPS receiver, and that is communicating with the M84 via RS-232. So we have the capability to receive GPS data directly into the ECU, and then that allows us to uh, log this information and for later analysis. The other principal communications system we have for an M84 is the CAN network, which is a controller area network. And this is a two-wire system. Uh, again, we've done some uh, webinars on this topic, so I won't go into a great deal of detail. But the principal thing uh, you need to, to know about this is that unlike, uh, for example, uh, an Ethernet system, uh, 
A CAN system allows multiple devices to communicate on the same pair of wires. In this case, we can, with one pair of wires, we can connect the ECU, uh, a dashboard, for example, or a Lambda system, and we can also talk to our laptop via our UTC adapter. So with one CAN bus, uh, we can have multiple devices, each of which can communicate, transmit, and receive on the same pair of wires. Uh, if you haven't got experience with CAN, I'd suggest you look at our CAN webinar, and we'll be doing some more detailed uh, webinars on that topic uh, as time goes on. But the point here is just to show that even though we have some uh, hardwired sensors which go straight into the M84, we can also gain access to other information from other devices on the CAN bus, or the M84 can transmit information to other devices. And that's principally what this webinar will be about, is how we use an M84 with the other uh, typical MoTeC devices that we would see. Okay, so the devices that MoTeC produce that an M84 will connect with include all of the ones you can see on your screen. There are quite a few devices. Video capture system, which is our camera system, which allows you to record one or two video feeds and also uh, display a dashboard on screen. In this case, the M84 produces the data uh, which is used to generate the dashboard on the video capture system screen. Shift light module is our small uh, light which you can use for shift lights and warnings. Again, this is uh, something M84 will transmit the information uh, and the module basically needs no setting up at all. Okay, we can also connect uh, two of our different Lambda products, the PLM, which is the professional Lambda meter, and we can also connect an LTC, which is our Lambda to can converter. Uh, also the MDD, our miniature digital display. ADLs, now th this is a somewhat more complicated thing, but we'll go into this later. Uh, our dash loggers, there are in various uh, versions of this device, and the M84 will transmit to all of those devices. Uh, and as we've seen earlier, we can also receive GPS information on our serial uh, RS-232 port. We can also connect to ignition expanders. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this webinar because we're principally dealing with communications here. Um, however, these functions are more or less identical to the way they would operate on an M800. So you can have uh, one or two ignition expanders and you select the appropriate mode. Now, there are some devices that our new M84 will not connect with. And the, at this point in time, we have no, uh, don't anticipate including this functionality into the M84. So if you need to use any of these devices, there will be an alternative ECU that you'll need to select. So we can't uh, communicate with our beacon receiver. We can't use knock control. Again, you'd need an M800 or an M400 type of ECU. Same thing applies to drive by wire. We cannot connect two of these ECUs together. Uh, we cannot take data from a dash logger and bring it into the M84. Again, this is a function that's possible with the M800. Uh, the same applies to our versatile input modules. Uh, these are fairly high-end devices and they are principally used with our dash loggers and our ACL, which is a uh, more sophisticated logging system. Uh, the same applies to the E888 and the E816. These are both uh, devices that allow extra inputs and outputs. And finally, the PDM, our power distribution module. Uh, we don't anticipate having any connectivity with this device at this point in time with the M84. Now the first thing you need to do with an M84 is connect it to your PC. Uh, all the tuning and data analysis and uh, data acquisition functionality with our M84 is via the CAN network. And so to connect to a laptop, you need one of our CAN devices. You can see there are two. Uh, the lower one is an older device, which we call the CAN cable. Uh, but predominantly, you'll be using the device at the top which we call a UTC. And this allows you to connect via a normal USB plug into your laptop straight into the, uh, the CAN system on your vehicle. Now, MoTeC convention is to use the five pin plug you can see on the left. These are a Canon type connector and all of our looms uh, and, and our UTC are designed for this, uh, this connector. So that's the one you'll be plugging into when you need to connect your laptop for tuning. Okay. now. The ECU manager program is very similar to the one we use for an M800. Again, we have covered this in another webinar, 
but essentially what you need to see when you launch that program is firstly what you want is uh, the M84 ECU in your splash screen because these programs are unique and you cannot communicate with an M84 using the existing M800 software. So you need to install the M84 ECU manager software and when you plug the CAN cable in and turn on the ECU, down in the lower left side of the screen, you'll see a green bar. And that green bar indicates that your UTC device is working, the ECU is connected, and it also shows you the software version that is loaded into the ECU. So the first time you need to connect to this ECU, if you can't see that green bar, there is still something that needs to be resolved. Once you see the green bar, that means your ECU is, uh, is talking to the PC, and then you press the icon that you can see circled on the upper left-hand side of the screen. This icon is the ECU Connect icon, and when you press that icon, it will establish communications with the ECU, and it'll open up with our tuning screens, which are, again, quite similar to those you'd see in an M800. So we won't go into a great deal of detail about the ECU Manager uh, program, because we're going to show various parts of this program in terms of how we connect to the other devices. So now we're going to go through and look at each of the devices that we can communicate with. And the first one of those is the VCS. So the VCS is our video capture system, which has its own cameras, one or two cameras, and communicates via the CAN bus with the M84. Uh, our other ECUs allow some flexibility. What we've done with the M84 is basically a set and forget situation. Uh, it means that you just the, the ECU is transmitting on the CAN always. Uh, it's a fixed transmit set, and so you don't actually need to set anything up at all in the ECU manager program for an M84. Uh, what we transmit to the camera system are our ground speed, RPM, our gear uh, efficiency, which is uh, our fuel table lookup value, and our throttle position. This is slightly different to uh, what is normally transmitted to a VCS because typically we would transmit our brake pressure as well. The M84 ECU doesn't have a brake pressure input, so therefore our uh, standard transmit uh, system here doesn't include that. As I said, the efficiency method is uh, how is which parameter is used for the fuel looking looking up in the fuel table. Uh, it'll either be normally manifold pressure or throttle position. Um, if you set that method to two, then you're which means you're using manifold pressure in your maps, which is typical for a boosted system then you can actually see your boost pressure on the VCS gauges. Now, we only transmit ground speed from the M84. Uh, there are four possible speed inputs in, into an M84, and ground speed is the, uh, typically it's the front wheel speed. Uh, so if you need drive speed, you won't be able to see that on the VCS. Okay, so these things are all uh, default settings that are transmitted out of the ECU, but in the VCS manager, uh, which is a separate program, we will need to set some of this information. So what I'll show you now is this, the VCS manager screen. Now, the way you get to this screen is you launch the VCS manager program. Uh, you then press the config button, which is a small button. You can't see it on this screen because once you've pressed that button, it'll open this screen that we're looking at now. Now, this is a somewhat complicated screen. Um, but what you're seeing on, on that little zoomed in section are the numbers that we need to use for our VCS to record the M84 data and show it on its dashboard. Now, without going into detail, effectively what you need to do is reproduce those numbers if you're to use the VCS with an M84. Uh, so you might just need to copy those numbers down. You go into the, uh, the config screen on the, M80, on the VCS. Uh, you can edit each of these numbers and make sure that they read the same. Then you save that configuration. You can see on the bottom we have uh, a, a row of buttons, one of which is Save As. So uh, there we've got it highlighted. So you save that configuration. And if the VCS is connected, uh, you will also be able to send the configuration to the VCS. Now, like all of our MoTeC devices, it's critical that you send this configuration once it's been edited. You should not assume that it is automatically sent to the VCS. So we save it first, then we send it. And that's really all you need to do with the VCS. Uh, there, are another, uh, there are other options with the VCS which you can select in terms of how your screen works, but for an M84 communication, these are the things you need. 
All right, now the other thing we can connect to very simply using the M84 is a shift light module. Uh, you can see one on the screen. These are a very useful device. Obviously, they're normally mounted in the driver's eye line, and we can have multiple uh, parameters controlling this. The M84 uh, transmits the information on CAN. It's always active, and how you set it up is uh, something that you can change in the M84 uh, ECU manager program. Now, this is set up in an exactly identical fashion to the way the M800 sets in, uh, the shift light module. So if you're familiar with the M800 settings, then that's all you need to do. Uh, we actually have already done a webinar on how these connections can be done with an M800, so you can refer to that if you need further information. But if you're in the M84 ECU manager screen, what you can do to get to this is you use the uh, escape key or you use your mouse to go through the menu system, and we're showing there that you go adjust, it's general setup, communications, SLM, and setup. And you will see the screen that's in front of you now. Now this is just the typical setup that we would use where we're not including things like temperature warnings on the SLM, we're just using it principally as a shift light, which is the simplest uh, way you might use it. Okay, so that just tells the SLM, uh, that, that tells the M84 what we're going to be using the shift light for. The other thing we do is we can set up a shift table for each of the LEDs, which tells it uh, what color and what intensity. I beg your pardon, the intensity is set on the previous screen. So what this, this table allows us to do is set for example here for differing RPM points and for differing uh, LEDs, at what RPM the LED will change color or turn off. Now the RPM axis uh, is not normally there until you enable it. So if you're in the ECU, man the M84 manager program, you press the A key and you will see an axis selection and that's when you can turn on the RPM axis and you can then enter in whichever RPM values you wish for. Clearly in this case, uh, these are just a demonstration. Normally you're running a shift light at 4,000 RPM. However, the point here is that you have control over each of the LEDs. Uh, each of the numbers in those tables represents the color that will come on at that RPM. Again, this is identical to the M800 and so it's a fairly straightforward thing to set. Okay, now the next thing we're going to look at is connecting to our mini dash display, uh, which is a very uh, useful device. Uh, as you can see, it's often, uh, it's quite small, it's often put actually on steering wheels, and this is just a simple device that communicates on the CAN line, uh, so it's very easy to connect to the ECU. And once again, we have a pre-designated data set, so effectively this is straight plug and play. The ECU manager has no settings, uh, the CAN transmit is fixed, uh, what we're sending is a data set which is very similar to the data set 3 used in the M800 and this gives you virtually all of the data you would principally expect to see, you know, RPM, throttle position, engine temp and so forth. So in the MDD display you have on the screen, we have uh, gear information, RPM and so forth. Uh, this is just a very simple thing to set up, you just plug it in and it works. I can say that with confidence, <laughs> I've done it many times. Now the MDD itself has multiple screens and you can have a button wide in which allows you to switch between the screens. Again the M84 is actually transmitting all of this information continuously so that's the only control you need is a button on the MDD. Okay now that's our simplest uh, dashboard dis device. Uh, more typically we might be using one of our dash loggers so you can see one of those on screen. These are a far more sophisticated device and these are very, very configurable. So in this case, uh, we are using the same information from the M84, uh, which means that you don't have any user settings within the M84 program. The CAN data is transmitted continuously and is not adjustable, and the data channels are basically very similar to the M800 set. So uh, we do have, uh, when you install uh, the M84 software, it will pre-designate uh, an M84 template, and this is what we use to quickly set up a dash to ensure that we get the right data in the right place. So if you're familiar with our dash loggers, you'll know that we uh, frequently use a template which MoTeC can supply, and this will simplify the setting up of these devices. So when you install our ECU manager for the M84, it's going to actually place that template in the right directories, 
and that means you can uh, set up a dashboard very simply. Now uh, our M800 and our M400 products allow you to receive data from the dash as well as transmit data. That's not possible with an M84. So what we're looking at is a one-way system where the M84 can send information to the dash and it cannot come, it, it cannot be uh, receive information in the opposite direction. Okay, so as I mentioned, these dash templates uh, are automatically installed for our current range of dashboards. Uh, this information is uh, a little bit hard to dig up when you're trying to set up the dashboard, so that's why we've put it on screen. Now, again, the first line you'll see, these are automatically installed, the ADL Manager templates, and that will work with our current range, which includes the ADL2, the ADL3, SDL3. Now, if you have an earlier SDL-type product, uh, the install for the M84 software does not copy your template and therefore you need to go to the directory I've outlined in blue in the first line, copy that template and then paste it into the directory in the second line. Uh, we will be changing this in a later release of the M84 but at this point in time you need to manually copy that across for an SDL. Now our original ADL product uh, uses a different template uh, we anticipate uh, providing one of these templates, but the current release does not have a template for an ADL. So if you wish to use the M84 with an ADL, you'll need to manually uh, produce the template yourself, and we won't go into that in this webinar. It's uh, somewhat complicated, um, but it, we anticipate that we will have a template for that in our next release. So in our typical dash manager, uh, again, we're looking at our current release dashes. What we need to do to bring out our M84 template is we open our Dash Manager program, we then uh, open our file, so we use the file menu and then we open our file, then we click on the connections menu and the communications tab, uh, and that's what brings up this menu you're looking at now, the communications setup. So we this screen is only shown once you have opened the file and gone to your connections and then your communications tab. So what we're looking at here is an empty communication set up for a dash and we just click on our CAN1 slot, what we call the slot, and then when you hit the select button, it'll open up that menu, but, uh, that menu table you can see on the right hand side. So if you scroll down, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, information there that we've preset and eventually you'll find the MoTeC M84 template. So you simply double click on that template and then hit the OK button, and that will load that entire template into the Dash Manager, and that's what we'll see in this screen. So now on our left, in CAN 1 position, we have the M84 template selected, and on the right-hand side, you can see uh, a list of the channels that are transmitted from the M84. In fact, there are many channels. You'd need to scroll down to see the entire list. So we're, what we're looking at is still a very comprehensive data set coming from the M84, that you can record to your dash logger. Uh, the remainder of how you set the dash logger is up to your preferences in terms of how you set the screen and so forth. So these are the only things we need to show you uh, that are specific to an M84. Now the other devices that are, may come in handy in terms of M84s are our Lambda devices. As you, uh, as you know, we, we sell the M84 with one Lambda channel uh, enabled and that allows you to correct, connect directly to a wideband Lambda probe or a narrowband Lambda probe such as the NTK uh, Lambda or the Bosch LSU sensors. As you can see there's a picture there of an LSU 4.9. So if you have, you, you, in other words, you already have one Lambda channel automatically enabled into the ECU. If you need more Lambda, the options are that you uh, purchase an upgrade code to enable the second Lambda which is wired directly into the ECU, or you can use one of these devices, uh, which, which is a separate controller for the Lambda and produces uh, a CAN information, which you then receive into the M84. So the PLM, the Professional Lambda Meter, that's one of our two devices that we sell, which will communicate over the CAN bus. Now, there are some settings here that must be, must be absolutely correct for the M84 to work properly. Um, there's a number of screens to go through, but the first thing is that uh, the M84 will only receive these devices on fixed CAN addresses, uh, either hexadecimal 460 for Lambda 1 or hexadecimal 461 for Lambda 2. 
Now these are essential and because the M84 uh, doesn't allow any other channels, there's a number of screens we need to go through just to uh, demonstrate that. We also need to set the sensor type to zero uh, to receive the CAN message from the PLM. Uh, then we need to set the input pin as well. So I'm going to show you each of those screens. Finally, in the PLM manager itself, which is a separate piece of software, we need to make sure that the transmitted data meets the same requirements. So this is a fairly complicated thing to do, but uh, once they're set, you can forget about it. All right, so the first thing we do in our ECU manager is we go to the Lambda sensor screen. And the, you can see the menu structure at the top there where you go adjust sensor setup, wideband Lambda sensor setup, pardon me, and sensor type. So this brings up your screen. Uh, your first sensor is more than likely the hardwired one, but if you wish to bring it in on CAN, firstly you must select option zero there, which will deselect the hardwired uh, Lambda sensor if there's one. That's a straightforward thing to do, and you would do that for either of those channels uh, that you wish to bring in from the PLM. Okay, the next thing we do is we need to change the input setup uh, for the Lambda 1 and Lambda 2 channels. Once again, we're in the M84 ECU manager program here, and you get to this screen by going adjust, sensor setup, input setup. Uh, that's how you do it using the menu structure, and there's also a keyboard shortcut uh, which is the Alt key and hold down hold down the Alt key and press the I key for your input setup. So you can see here we have Lambda 1 and Lambda 2. Uh, these both need to be, or either one needs to be changed over to the setting for the PLM over CAN. So to do this, you double click on the uh, Lambda 1 position and then you get a scroll down menu where you roll down to number 81 and select it. Now again, these need to be done uh, to enable the PLM to produce the right data and if it's not done you will see either no Lambda information or incorrect Lambda information. Okay that's what you need to do in the ECU manager program. Now we're going to take a look at the PLM manager. Okay so this is the uh, this is another piece of software and what we're doing now is ensuring that the PLM is producing the right information for our M84 ECU. So firstly what you do is you start the program, uh, you have your PLM turned on, and then you go online and you get the configuration from the PLM. And you can see that's how we've shown this screen here. This will download the configuration that's currently in the PLM. Okay, then the next thing you need to do is you need to set the press the setup button and you go to the CAN messages here. And what we can see is that uh, for PLM to produce the same addresses that the M84 uses, we set message 1, which is highlighted here in red, so we have a series of tabs. Message 1 needs to be set to address 460, the compound ID needs to be set to 0, and our message rate needs to be set to 50 per second. Uh, I won't go into all the reasons for this, but just let's say this is the, this is the way they must be set, and you'll have a faultless performance if you do this. Uh, because we can run multiple PLM devices on our CAN system, we also need to set up the uh, additional messages, and this is to ensure that we don't get any clashes on the CAN bus, which the M84 will be unable to interpret. So when we go to the Message 2 tab, what we need to do here is set our message rate to off, and this means that it won't transmit any other messages apart from the first message at address 460. Now we should set each of these tabs uh, for message 2, 3 and 4 and the collect master, you should set the message rate to off for all of them. This ensures we only have one message being transmitted which is message 461, I beg your pardon, 460. Okay, so then once you press the OK button, you save the file and then you again you go back to the online menu and you send that configuration to the PLM and that'll, that'll allow you to produce the correct CAN information. If you were using the PLM for the CAN channel 2, you would have to set address 461 as your message 1 address. Uh, I'll just go back to that screen again momentarily. Okay, so in, if you were looking for Lambda 2 rather than Lambda 1, we would still use message 1, we would set the address to 461, the compound ID would still be set to 0, and the message rate would still be set to 50. Now this is critical, and if, if it's not set this way, 
you will find the data does not uh, does not get interpreted by the M84 correctly. Okay, now the other device that we have, uh, which offer, operates similarly to the PLM, is our Lambda to CAN device, and we also have a dual Lambda to CAN device. These both operate identically. One of them is simply two of the same devices in one uh, in one housing. So this screen is similar to our PLM screen. The CAN receive is fixed. It's always active, but we must set the right uh, hexadecimal addresses. And we must also make sure that our lambda sensor types and our input pins are correct. So we're, we're back in the M84 ECU manager. Once again, uh, whether it be an LTC or a PLM, these settings are actually the same. So this is the adjust menu. We're setting it to uh, number zero, and that means we're designating it for uh, PLM. In fact, that can be PLM or LTC receive. The same thing applies to our input pin setup. Uh, you need to get to that menu and then make sure that you have uh, number 81 selected so you're getting the lambda over the CAN bus rather than from the hardwired sensors. Now the PLM, uh, sorry, the LTC devices have a different manager program and they are a little bit easier to set up than the PLMs. So if you are using an LTC device, you simply have to make sure that the right channel is uh, selected. So you open your LTC manager, uh, you make sure that the LTC is connected up on your CAN bus and as soon as it finds the device it will bring it up on this screen. And on the left you can see the name is LTC1 and on the right you can see the CAN address is set to hexadecimal 460. Now that means it will automatically come into the M84 ECU as Lambda 1. Now if you need to change that because you want to use the Lambda 2 position you simply double click on the name where it says LTC1 and then you will see the setup screen uh, which is below and then you just select LTC1 or LTC2 so that will automatically load in the correct CAN address. Uh, a reminder here if you select, select any other of those addresses the M84 will be unable to receive the information. It's only capable of receiving two lambda channels and they must be on hexadecimal 460 or 461. All right, now the other thing that we most uh, frequently would use in an M84 is a GPS. Uh, no need to describe what that does. Uh, the great benefit of our, of our uh, integrated system with uh, MoTeC devices is that you can log GPS data into your ECU and then you can use our I2 analysis program uh, to do some very sophisticated uh, analysis including track mapping, lap timing and so forth. Um, our current system allows you to set, uh, for example, the start, stop, the start finish line at a racetrack as a GPS coordinate and then the I2 program will automatically generate lap times based on that information. I'm not going to go into how that's done. We do actually have a webinar on that topic and you can see the address uh, at the bottom of the screen there. So if you wish to go through that in detail, uh, that's a webinar by Jamie Augustine who is, uh, is very, uh, very experienced with this, with this topic. Uh, so all you need to know in terms of how the M84 is used is that we have a preset GPS receive uh, uh, setting in the M84. There is no ECU setting required. If you plug a GPS into our RS232 receive pin and it has the correct speed, then you will automatically be receiving GPS. Now the easiest way to make sure that you're getting that GPS data is to use our view screen. You simply have the ECU connected you press the V key and on the right hand end of that screen you will see the GPS tab and it will immediately show you whether you're getting uh, the correct data from the GPS unit. Uh, there are a few little uh, concerns here. Uh, GPS latitude and longitude don't actually display correctly on the M84 ECU manager screen. Um, the data has been split into chunks. Um, it doesn't affect the way the I2 program works but whilst you're in the M84 uh, manager program you can't see the actual latitude and longitude but you will see valid numbers which will then be interpreted by the I2 program. Again as I said we can do our lap times and track mapping from this data. Okay now the only other thing you must do of course with the GPS is to make sure that it's part of your data logging because uh, whilst the ECU is receiving that information it will only record it if you've set it up in your logging screen. 
So to get to our logging setup, we use the adjust menu. Uh, we scroll down to the data logging setup and then the very bottom entry on that data logging setup is the GPS. Now for us to get our correct uh, latitude and longitude information for our track mapping, we need to have uh, the four parameters I've shown there. Latitude HW, Latitude LW, Longitude HW, Longitude LW. And normally we would also include the GPS speed because of course that's a very useful uh, thing to see. Now you'll notice that we only have set our logging rate here at 5, which means 5 times a second or 5 hertz. And that's because typically the, uh, certainly the GPS units that we sell uh, communicate uh, at an update rate of 5 hertz. So that means if you log this information any faster, you don't effectively get any better information. Um, for example, if you log it at 20 hertz, you'll use up four times as much memory in your logging, but you won't actually get any more accuracy. Uh, as the M84 has a fixed number of logging items available, uh, you'll find if you want to include GPS, you may have to turn the logging off on some of the other channels um, because you're only allowed a maximum of 16. And in this case, we're using five items just for the GPS, but it's uh, certainly a very useful thing. So you, again, the, uh, the benefit is apparent once you download your data logs from the M84 and then you open them in I2 and you get a great deal of uh, analysis capabilities with that GPS information. Okay, that's all we're going to cover today in this webinar. Now we've been fairly quick, but essentially you can look at each of those screens and uh, replicate those settings if you're trying to uh, connect the devices that we've mentioned. Uh, these are all settings that have been tested and we know they work, so you, sh you can have confidence in what you see on the screen. Uh, there are many other ways you can get help from MoTeC apart from these webinars. We obviously run other webinars and these can be viewed and downloaded. Uh, we also have a very uh, thorough forum system which you can become a member of and uh, many of the staff here at our MoTeC R&D Centre will be on those forums each day and also our MoTeC uh, staff in other countries. So this is a very uh, good way for you to get involved and to both pass feedback to us and have any of your queries resolved. Okay, that's the end of our webinar today. Um, we will probably update this in some time, but the, as you can see, we can get a great deal of functionality out of, out of an M84. Thank you very much for attending, and it's goodbye from us. <laughs>